What's up guys, Claudia here checking in from the America server and today we have received the preview for the um, first patch of July which should be next week so let's just quickly see what Vespa has in store for us. Um, first and foremost they have announced uh, balancing for 11 heroes which you can see is Gao, Celine, Aisha, Floss, Arch, Mediana, Urzi, Lucius and then Lorraine, Nile and Kibera, the latter three being the ones who are getting nerfed. So let's just go and see what we get. Um, Gao is getting a bunch of buffs. It seems that they want to make him more DPS oriented character with some additional buffs. So that's not too bad. Um, I think he might become meta in some cases, but we'll see how it actually works out. His soul weapon is actually pretty good too. So. It could be a good option in the future. Good for Gao, he has been a kind of forgotten character. Uh, Celine, um, some minor changes, the biggest one being her um, as for Dark, which means that at the start of each battle she gets an attack increase and after stacking this up 10 times she also gets a uh, boss damage increase which is irremovable and her position is changing from middle to back and so does her attack range. So basically they are pushing her to be more of an Eclipse hero um, and this change pretty much supports that. I guess this is to compensate for the changes in Eclipse that were done recently. Um, moving on, Aisha. Now, as one of the old Aisha mains, I was really excited to see her name, but to be honest guys, this looks a little bit um, disappointing. Let's see, the destruction ray will no longer target the nearby enemy and the range is increased. So, um, does it mean that uh, if I get jumped by uh, an assassin or an Isla, then my ray will still be focused on the unkillable Loman. That sounds super fun, yay. Um, yeah, we'll see whether that's good or bad. Um, S2 light for one additional mana cost, you are immune to CC now. Um, that could be good, I mean, her S2 is basically her only damage skill. Uh, question is, can this be dispelled or not, because a lot of these is immune to stuff. Uh, is, is actually dispellable and you still get CC'd. Um, we'll see. Also you kinda trade more damage on your beam and you have to pay one more mana. So whether this is worth or not, you could just roll with like a Desart or a Lumen Shield. But yeah, maybe. Um, unique weapon changes, so they felt that the uh, effects of the unique weapon weren't that great, so they changed it. You get crit damage and death penetration, and after dealing damage 500 times, this is doubled. Now, hmm, first of all, Aisha already has crit damage on her soul weapon, also on her tier 5 dark, which is also very slowly stacking stuff, but at least it's like 25 stacks, not uh, 50 as it used to be. And now you get another 50 after 500 uh, times dealing damage and some death penetration. In comparison, Mike Sarah gets 50 crit damage right at the get go just for having a 5 star, and she also gets some mana so she doesn't need mana stats. So, this seems kind of weird. Like, why would you do crit damage on her? She already has two other sources of crit damage. Are you Pepega or what's wrong with you? Where is the non hero damage? Where is the boss damage? Um, I don't really get it, to be honest. She didn't need more crit damage. And yeah, so they, they say that they are changing the CC immune effect, so um, it's not really that um, um, easy to interrupt her. But the main issue with her is that only her S2 does really damage, and her other two skills and her S4 do not really do anything. Really. It's just like non-existent. So she could have used the real revamp. This is kind of looking like they just threw something at her and hope that she will be better now. She won't. I don't think so. Maybe like if you're running around with an A220 and now you have an uninterruptible beam in PvP, then you can be like GG. But um, yeah, I think she would have deserved a better overhaul. Like say Fluss, who is being uh, becoming a monster again, basically. Uh, he gets more dispels, more dodge, more more defense, and now you cannot attack bait him. If you have a wizard, he will jump to the wizard anyway. So GG for me, I'm gonna be killed by flusses left and right. So good. 
yes, I'm a little bit salty about the plus change. Sorry, plus means. Um, Arch, similarly, is getting some upgrades that basically he no longer needs the sigils to be present for a lot of his skill effects to be working. He gets some mana reduction and stuff like that. All in all, mm, he was already a magic counter, I guess just that his skills are becoming better now without the sigil up, um, uh, boost, so yeah, I guess it's good. Not terribly great, but it's whatever it is. Uh, Mediana. Now, Mediana is interesting. First of all, she is getting... Uh, a, her skill 4 will be changed so that she is no longer counted as the highest attacker in your team, which means that uh, she will not steal your buffs if, she, if you have built her with high attack and if she goes over your DPS. Also, her... Um, uh, S3 can now be applied to two allies, which is interesting, and she will receive some uh, physical damage bonus from her unique weapon, which is quite nice because her buffs weren't really that strong anymore, so this could be quite nice for physical teams. Actually, not a terribly big change, but it helps, so Mediana, good stuff. Urzi. Now, a lot of people have been freaking out over this on my guild's Discord because basically all her stacks are now irremovable, which means that if you make her really tanky, then slowly her damage will rank, uh, ramp up and up and up, and after a while she will just kill you. Of course, this is about PvP. For PvE, uh, the duration of her unique weapon is changed from 15 seconds to 30 seconds. This is quite nice because it uh, had issues with falling off at times, especially in like guild conquest. So this is quite nice for her, but she might become a PvP nightmare once again. I kind of hate getting one-shotted by her anyway. Uh, let's say Lucius. Now, they say that he has good skills, but they aren't impactful enough, so he gets some buff to all of them and some duration in uh, in um, increases or cooldown decreases, which is quite nice. Um, not really that big. Except that her his unique weapon is giving a more non-hero damage, which is which is quite nice, especially with teams who do not have that. And also, his unique weapon at Advancement Phase One will now give 35% attack. Yeah, that was one of his big falls that his soul weapon does not give any buffs to the team. Like it's just a heal and and uh, cooldown reduction for himself at A2, but it doesn't really buff your team. So. They are kind of addressing this with A1. I might even keep mine, because Eclipse and stuff. I use him in Eclipse. Now we have arrived to the nerf section. Of course, Lorraine, people have been expecting the nerf, and some even who main her say that this is not actually enough. We will see how that works. So they are reducing the effect range of her S3 and increasing the mana cost for the perk, which is the Dispel. I'm kind of torn about this, because... She's a CC dispel with some DPS, and um, if her CC doesn't range the backline, then it's kind of useless. So I'm not really sure how that will work out, as I guess we will see once it is live. Um, the other skill uh, or change makes more sense, I think, that if she dies, her poison effect will disappear. This way you can just dot everyone up and then die and watch them die from your dot anyway. So I would say this is a good one. Um, but we'll see. Now, Nyla. Nyla is interesting. Um, they are increasing the mana cost on her S1 skill, so now it's 3 mana. Um, so I guess no more the early jumps with Soul Spring Water. But still, Nyla is usually in very tanky teams. If you can't kill her in time, she will still just jump to your DPS and one-shot you. So, whatever. The wind reading duration has been increased. Yeah, that was to be expected. They changed that last time and I didn't really get why they did. And then they are changing the skill for death penetration boost um, to be less um, and the activation chance to be lower and the stun duration to be reduced. Now, my problem with this is it doesn't matter if you are stunned for one or two seconds. If, if, if it interrupts your cast, you die anyway, or at least waste your cast. And uh, in some cases, that's uh, more of an issue whether you are stunned for one second or two, I think. But... Um, yeah, maybe less of a lockdown hero now, and maybe does a little bit less damage with the penetration change, and will be a little bit slower, but um, still, it's a very tanky character who can just target your main DPS and kill them. Unless you have like an attack bait, but um, honestly, most of you guys will not, and I do not. 
maybe some of you do, but it's kind of hard to build around that. Um, Kibera, so they are changing some of his stuff because they feel that uh, choosing one of his swords is not like a high risk, high reward situation. So now it's gonna cost a little bit more mana. I can't really comment on that, whether that's good or bad. Kibera is kind of a PvP hero who only works at a very high investment level. He can be really scary, but uh, only in that stage. So I don't know whether this is big or not. So now, now he needs one mana. All right, okay. And finally, they are changing Radiance a little bit to decreasing its uptimes and stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, having an artifact that is super powerful when you get dispelled and having a game where AoE one-shots are a thing and units like Bow or Loman or, say, Fallen Frey are a thing, an artifact like this is kind of stupid. It's, it's just, yeah... Yeah, strange. Like, if if you run double shields, double dispels, and have this on you, then it's like GG. So yeah, they do nerf it a little bit, but I think it's still gonna be cancer in arena. So whatever. Um, yeah. Now there is another post where they do talk about more stuff, especially about these new uh, piece of memory stuff. So as you guys might have seen, I like to record the story dungeons and Vespa felt too that it's kind of a waste to, to not keep them in the game. So they will be re-adding Cycle of Fate and Pensiron story dungeons with the next patch, which means that you can keep going back to them and do them for stamina and there will be some special kinship items. Uh, which you can use for stuff and you can also use these to obtain Dark Lord Castle and Fallen Fray for free like in the original event plus there will be some secret dungeon that you can use interesting that there is a 200 entry limit there they don't really say what the rewards are but we have seen that there is uh, memory missions um, that you can do for some additional rewards so that's kind of nice good to have um, on top of that, we will be having some uh, Ophelia-related summer show event, which will be running two weeks. Guess more, uh, more stamina spending probably, and more rewards. That's always good. And then they talk a bit more about the balance changes, and then there is some content uh, balance changing as well. Uh, it seems that they are lowering the difficulty of uh, Trial of Earth, so I am at. Um, the Shadow of Aegina stage 3 and 7, I don't really remember whether these were hard. Also Otherworldly Darkness Shockmas stage 1. I guess it might have been uh, hard for some users, but maybe not for everyone else. So we'll see um, how that is. And then they are changing some of Eclipse. And finally, the boss 20, which was one of the tougher bobs, bosses um, in, in Eclipse. So that's that. And then there is a, some Guild War change that they are also doing. Uh, yeah, so all in all, AI heroes will be easier to beat. And that's it really, guys. Finally, there is some survey running, which you can access in this um, Google Forms, and you will be able to... Uh, give some feedback on the game. If you do it, your ran uh, your reward is a random unique weapon ticket. Well, I guess it can be worth to just give your opinion how, how you like stuff, how you don't like stuff. So I recommend you to fill it out. And that's been it really, guys. Just a real quick, quick one. Cloudy out for now. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.